still, and that's a sit down. <laughs> it is uh, nice to be with you, uh, always a treat to be at your church home, and um, uh, you treat me as family, and I kind of like that, and, and a blessed holiday and holy day to you all. Uh, this past uh, Saturday, we had our Wesley Senior Ministries uh, Christmas pageant or gala and had a nice time and I've been with uh, Wesley for uh, well 35 years actually 35 and a half years now and their gift to me was they, they found out where Marilyn and I vacation and they they took care of next year's vacation wow. yeah isn't that nice of them? That's great. and uh, so uh, it is uh, <laughs> pardon me <laughs> and uh, so uh, let me uh, and I share that just because it's, that was a really nice present. Don't usually share what kind of stuff we get, but that's pretty nice. I want to share with you uh, uh, the reading from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem. Have you heard this before? <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. Because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born in this day the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah of the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed and what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as had been told them. Amen. I've, I've heard that the world today is very different from the world in which Jesus was born. Uh, I guess in the sense of... Um, nations in the world, population more than likely as well. Uh, certainly technological progress, progress in general, that would be different. But I also contend that the world today is very similar to the world then, when Jesus was born. And I like to uh, share with you the what I believe to be the similarities. And, and the first uh, similarity between the world today and the world in which Christ was born uh, is decrees. Mary and Joseph were uh, subjects of the Roman Empire and, and they went and fulfilled their citizenship responsibilities. Decrees are what we follow every day too. I, I followed at least eight decrees coming down here tonight from home. I stopped at red lights and went through green lights. I, I uh, slowed down uh, when I saw the police. Uh, 
I, I, I follow, you follow decrees all the day long, uh, rules. Uh, I just have to mention uh, April 15th, <coughs> decrees, no different. In fact, law and rule and order has always been a part of civilization. And then uh, another <coughs> similarity is that of, of uh, waving tongues. Now, Mary and Joseph had already had some, some time to take in uh, all that had been spoken to them by the angels. And yet, as, as they moved from Nazareth to Bethlehem, they, uh, they heard waving tongues. And they're not even married. And did you hear? And how about that? Waving tongues. <coughs> and, uh, and these waving tongues continue to wave today. They're just more in People's Magazine and uh, all sorts of other published articles. As well as unpublished articles. <clears throat> and another similarity uh, is that of making do. Making do. That's all about we'll manage, we'll figure out, we'll find a way. <clears throat> when uh, the inn was full, and you know what? It really was. It really was full. The way we hear it read is that there wasn't any room in the inn because, uh, thank you, that, that they, well, they were full. I was there. I was there that evening. <laughs> Not many people know that. But it was really full. <clears throat> and Mary and Joseph, they, what? They may do. We'll figure it out. And they found a place. Either a stable, as we know it, or a little cave uh, outside the inn, and, and there the Christ child was born. Making do. My goodness. You ever get tired of making do? But that's, that's a similarity, and it's been a similarity for humankind for a long time. Uh, what comes our way? Well, we make do. It's part of our creativity and part of our survival and part of our uh, overall makeup to, to, to get through something that uh, seems overwhelming. But we find a way. We find a way to do it. Making do. And then another similarity that comes with the story of the birth of Christ that between our world and, and the Lord's world then has a uh, <clears throat> Everything to do with the reverence and awe, and uh, and the angels uh, uh, were uh, sharing this good news, and the shepherds were uh, terrified as well as moved by it. Same two experiences happen usually when holy takes place. It was when uh, Moses uh, uh, saw the burning bush. You know reverence and awe and terrified at this all at the same time. Uh, it was when uh, the, uh, the the Red Sea opened. Uh, reverence and awe and, and terrified of what mighty works. And that's, that's a similarity then and a similarity now. Uh, when we find ourselves in a holy moment, there is that moment, moment of terrifying, uh, what's this all about? I recall back in 70, 70, 74, I was uh, serving as associate pastor at Donaldson Heights uh, United Methodist Church. That's about a, two miles from Opryland, when it was known as Opryland Amusement Park then. And uh, it was a Wednesday night evening, supper, and... As I was going down to the fellowship hall, uh, I really felt a stirring of the Holy Spirit. 
And I did everything in my power to squash it. And I did. Uh, now, you gotta understand, I was all of maybe 22, but that wasn't really the matter right about that. It was a matter of, I didn't know how to handle it. Really. Uh, now, I have told Bill and others that in pastoral care that the Holy Spirit is my primary guide and leader, but at that point, I found myself, uh, come back another time, okay? And, well, the Holy Spirit stayed, but I remember very well that feeling of awe and reverence, but I was terrified. And I was leading the Wednesday night program that night, too, and, and uh, the Holy Spirit just couldn't interfere. <laughs> but uh, I, I was, I, I, it's like that happened yesterday. Uh, but the similarity is uh, the shepherds, the reverence and awe, and, and, and terrified at the same time. And when we have that, uh, we understand well the, the shepherds felt. And then that followed with uh, uh, another similarity that we have in common then and now. And that is decisions, decisions. The shepherds, what was their decision? To stay. After all, the sheep belonged to the community of Bethlehem, and, and that was their job. Uh, they had just signed a new contract, and no, they really didn't do that. And they found themselves uh, saying, we ought to really stay here. Then, ah, we need to go. Decisions, decisions. And so we have those today, too. And they went and saw the Christ child. And as they went to see the Christ child, uh, I think the Lord was probably in some extra good shepherd duty that night. Uh, watching the flock by night. As the shepherds were walking, watching the new shepherd who come into the world. Decisions, decisions. Recently with a, a, a couple who on the same day of the same afternoon, their mother had a, a, a major uh, health crisis and a new great grandbaby was born. Same day, same afternoon, same hour. And where they were having to go, they had to decide. And so what did they do? They made do. And some went to see uh, mom, and others went to see the new grandchild. And then they swapped. They may do, but decisions, decisions. And how we have those in our own faith journey well as well. Decisions, decisions. It's between a, a, a hard place and a rock. No, that's not right. That's like two, two pods and a pea. No, no, two peas and a pod. Yeah, you know, and they were between a, a rock and a hard place. A rock and a hard place. And that's no difference today. We find ourselves in uh, similar discipleship situations. Uh, we find ourselves in, in similar family situations and realities. Um, same, same today. Same as then. And then another part of this wondrous story that makes it so contemporary is, is how, is how the, the shepherds came. They, they walked there. And you might be saying, oh, where'd you, where, where'd you come from, Dennis? They walked there. And so did the wise men. They walked there. You know what, every one of us in this room as we made a profession of faith, we got up and walked with Jesus too, didn't we? Not a single one of us. Oh, wait a minute. Anyone ever take a scooter down the aisle to join the church? <laughs> or how about a moped? Now that would be a blast. They have a moped in the back of the church for anyone who wanted to. Well, don't worry. Some church will probably do that someday. Or, um, uh, or 
Anyone ever come down in a little red wagon? No. 